Ladies, welcome, welcome, welcome to Purpose Powered Prosperity. We're talking women and wealth today and I am thrilled and excited to be sharing this journey with you. It's going to be absolutely uh, unbelievable. Um, if not for you, then certainly for me because as I was saying to the ladies who arrived early, uh, this is one of my favourite things in the world to talk about is getting powerful in the world realm of our finances. I believe there is nothing that we can do to shape the world the way we want it more powerfully than stepping into our power around finances, mobilizing our finances and really stepping up and sitting at the table um, by deciding where we want our money to go. You know, which causes do we want to support? Which companies do we want to support? We can absolutely dictate where what this world looks like when we are in flow around money. Uh, it's the, you know, they, they say money makes the world go round. And there is a certain truth to that. We can certainly shape what this world looks like with money. And we as women, I believe, are perfectly positioned to do so. Not to the exclusion of men. There's going to be some great lessons here for any lads that have joined us on the line. Don't you worry about that. I'm not, uh, everything is going to be as relevant for men as women. But I am speaking specifically um, in some context to women today because it's just something that's really close to my heart for us as women uh, in this society. So ladies, there's a little quote on our, um, on our screen there. Women with money and women in power are two very uncomfortable ideas in our society, says Candace Bushnell. And I am here to say let's step into our power around our money and get very, very comfortable with it. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please print out your notes page. It's at bit.ly, bit.ly slash PPP notes. You can print that out so you can take some notes on everything that we're learning while we're here tonight. As you arrive, drop into the question box there and let me know where in the world you are so we can get a sense of who's on the call and, and where you're arriving from. I'm sure we will have people continue to arrive over the um, over the coming uh, 10 and 15 minutes. People are always a little bit late and think we've had hundreds of, uh, of people register for the call tonight. I think 428 at the last look. So very, very exciting times and I'm thrilled to be sharing it with you ladies. So let's have a look at it. Let's start with the state of things for women because we really are talking women and wealth tonight. The good news is 80% of the newly self-employed in the UK since the global financial crisis are women. And Warren Buffett, has been, who is the, the world's richest man through investment alone, he hasn't ever run any of his own businesses, he just invests in businesses. Um, so what he not, doesn't know about money isn't worth knowing. Um, was interviewed with Melinda Gates uh, recently, by Melinda Gates recently, and um, said that now that we're using 100% of the talent, I'm optimistic. So he's recognising that women really are coming to the fore in these areas. Women are becoming the largest economic force in the world. It's not China, it's not India, it's women, says CNN. It's even got a name. We are the Tigress economy, ladies. So if we want to, oops, Daisy, sorry about that. Um, if we want to actually step into our power around these things, let's get loads of money and decide where we're spending it and shape the world that way. <laughs> we're also seeing in spiritual communities a reemergence of the divine feminine. Indeed, the Dalai Lama said, the world will be saved by the Western woman. When I heard that, I was at, um, both excited and terrified because most, most of the Western women I was hanging out with were uh, too busy putting out their daily fires, stressing about you know how they were going to get their kids to school and get the dry cleaning done on time and dinner on the table and where was um, you know what were they where were they going to go on their holiday this year to be thinking about saving the world. And this is where one of many, our business was born. It was born from a recognition that the world over in every context, there is a calling for women to step up to the fore. And yet we have, I don't see the space. I don't see the time. I don't see the education that we need to be able to step up and save the world by and large, not the average woman. And it is the average woman, it's women like me, women like you who are going to do this. It's no more Gandhis, no more Martin Luther Kings, it's up to us, right? Now, the problem with this great calling and this great recognition that there's so much available for us as women is that there's some bad news too. We are 60% more likely to suffer from job stress and burnout than men. The gender pay gap is the highest it's been in 20 years. 
we are less happy as a gender than we were 40 years ago and massively less happy compared to men. 67.2% of us in the UK, of the employed UK are, um, I beg your pardon, 67.2% of women in the UK are employed, but we're twice as likely as men to live in poverty. And in Europe, we work an average of 64 hours a week, which includes our paid, unpaid and commuting time, compared with 53 hours for men. So excuse me, gentlemen, if there are men on the line, but ladies, if you're feeling exhausted, that's why, because we're working at least, uh, what is that, 11 hours a week more than our lovely gentleman friends. Here's the thing, we are so bloody busy, we don't have time to change the world. The woman that is suffering from this stuff here is not going to be able to create what was on the slide before. Something's got to change. And the thing that we at One of Many believe has to change is the energy with which we're coming at the world. Because for most of us, if we want to transform something, if we want to get better at it, we hunker down, we gird our loins, we get into our aggressive energy, we take it on, you know, we take the bull by the horns, we grab, it by, grab life by the balls, we get very masculine. And this is why we're suffering stress and burnout. This is why we're less happy than we were 40 years ago, because we are trying to create and get results in the realm of our finance, in the realm of our wealth, in the realm of even our health and our relationships from our masculine energy, and it's not serving us. So what we need to do is transform this, ladies. And so at one of many, we talk about coming from a new place, and that is a place called soft power. I've just realized you haven't seen any of those slides that I've just been sharing with you because <laughs> I didn't have the play button going, but now I do. So you can now see my slides. So my apologies for that. So what is, um, what is soft power, ladies? What is it? What it is, is a new way for women to create results in the world, whether it be in finances, health, wealth, whatever. We define it from the definitions of soft. Soft being agreeable, calm, gentle, and yes, even yielding. Not that yielding means weak. If you know anything about martial arts, you know that giving way to the attack of your opponent is one of the most powerful things that you can do. But in a very soft and authentically feminine way. And power coming from the Middle English meaning to be able. It's not about strength, force, aggression. It's about being able. And that's what we want you to do, ladies. We want you to come from a place of calm, of agreeable, of gentleness, and but very strong ability to create results. Soft power is about the collaboration of many. The time has come for us as women to stop working independently, stop isolating ourselves. It's not the pursuit of one. Individualism and personal success, all of these things are very masculine paradigm thinking. What we're about is a very feminine paradigm here, a shift to collaboration and creation of amazing wealth. So our journey together starts today with introducing you to what I'm calling my energy outcome matrix, having a bit of a chat about the cultural paradigm around money, the impact that our unconscious mind and our body mind has on our results in this area. I'll share with you three shifts to purpose-powered prosperity so you can make those shifts, shifts um, yourself. Uh, we will be sharing a few of my prosperity principles with you. I won't get through all seven. I had to cut things down in the interest of um, the 75 minutes that we're together tonight. Uh, there's just so much content I want to share but um, couldn't fit it all in, I'm afraid. And one of the things that I would really love to do is give you the opportunity to transform your financial future starting January. And that will be by introducing you to a great event that we've got coming up um, just near my house in the Cotswolds here in January called Be Wealth. Um, it's an extraordinary event. It has been filling up very, very quickly. We only have 12 places left for that event, which I fully expect will uh, sell as a result of, of this webinar. Um, and I hope that it is you, my darling, who is going to be joining us there because it is going to be an extraordinary event. So Regardless of whether you choose to join us on that event, I want to make sure that on the course of, over the course of tonight's call, you leave with some extraordinary distinctions and understandings that will help you to really step into your power around creating great prosperity and 
upping your game a level, up leveling in this arena because I think it's really, really important. Just a few things about the webinar. If you have questions um, as you as uh, as we progress here, please. Um, Ah, oh, let's see. Can everybody hear me okay? Someone's saying that they can't hear me. I just want to check that you can hear me all right. Can you hear me, ladies? Excellent. Great. Thank you. Just wanted to check because I had a couple of people say I can't hear. So that says it's not my end, which is good. Um, one other thing I'm just going to check here is that we have all of these things sorted. Okay. Great. Thanks, ladies. And you can see the slides moving now, right? You can see all the slides moving. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay. So let's continue on from um, from here. So um, yes, about the webinar. If you have questions at any stage um, along the um, along the way, uh, you can type them into your question box. Please feel free to type questions in as we go here. Uh, what I what I will do while I won't stop the questions along the way. What I will do is um, at the end, I will stick around for as long as you need answering questions. Unless my son wakes up, in which case I may need to nick upstairs and do a quick shushing. But other than that, um, we will uh, continue along that um, uh, along in that vein. All right. Now, I think it's really important if someone's going to start talking to you about wealth that you appreciate who they are and, and why you should listen. Um, I'm not just... Uh, well, I am just like you. I'm, I wasn't going to say I'm not just like you. I'm not going to say, you know, I'm just uh, someone off the street. Yet, at another level, I am just someone off the street. You know what I mean? I'm just like you. We are one of many women. We're all just one of many. And I'm just like you. The only distinction for me when it comes to getting sorted in the realm of my finances is that I took it on and made it a priority and made it happen. Um, I started my working life as a doctor. Now, you might think, well, that's, um, you know, that's a surefire way to, to get ahead financially. But if you've ever played uh, Robert Kiyosaki's game Cash Flow, you know that the, um, the more educated you are, the harder it is to get out of the rat race. <laughs> and that is certainly true. But as for me, I wasn't cut out to be a doctor and I left it after my intern year and went off to drama school, which was a, a passion of mine, followed my heart. But it was um, it turned out that that wasn't my career either. I don't want to spend ages talking about my whole journey. But suffice to say, I went along to a personal development seminar when I was six months into my um, acting career. And it was there that I discovered my calling. Here it was, there was a guy up on stage who was by turns inspiring and educational. Um, he was helping people and there was a great element of performance to it, I suppose. And I thought to myself, that's it. That's what I wanted to do. So I started a little coaching business. I was living in Sydney at the time. And the only reason that my coaching business was any more successful than any of the other graduates I coached with was because I did what my teacher told me to do. He told me how to market a coaching business when I had no network. I did it. And you know what? Holy moly, I got some clients. Um, it grew quite quickly, actually, and before long, um, I was uh, contracted to do speaking uh, for his organization. I was traveling all over the world speaking to um, groups of up to 3,000 at a time, um, which was huge, huge fun. My finances started to take off when I was doing something that I loved. That was one of my first aha moments. You know, if you do something you love, yes, it is easier to make money. I don't believe if you do what you love, the money will follow, and I'll tell you why about that later, but it does make it easier. Um, but I also started to burn out uh, because I was just traveling far, far too much. So what I realized was even though I was doing something I loved and I was really good at, I needed to find a better way. It was because everything that I had done on board with my mission that was deeply connected for me, but it was coming from my masculine energy. I was needing to kind of, you know, just perform, perform, perform. And this is the thing. Ladies, we have some um, we have some testosterone. Testosterone is the hormone that helps you to kind of keep pushing through, get it done, show up, get it done, get it done, show up, get it done. We have some testosterone, but we have a fraction of the testosterone that men do. And when we run out of testosterone, we start running on adrenaline, which is why we burn out so quickly. So we had to find a better way. And in 2008, I found a better way. Um, my husband and I, it wasn't my husband back then, but we launched a business together. That was part of it. 
team is so important for us as women. Isolation is not a good thing. And you know, in the first 12 months of starting that business, we launched three membership, uh, three membership sites, we launched um, a, a, a three-day training, indeed three three-day trainings, a 12-month mentoring program, a bunch of online products and programs. All of this I did with um, myself and two part-time staff members in a 12-month period of time. Now, I was busy, but it didn't feel like hard work because it was coming from a totally different place than anything I had ever done before. And it was my first step into the realm of soft power. Now, I haven't nailed it yet, ladies. I'm like you, a student on this journey, and I'm continually growing, um, you know, my ability to, to be in my soft power. Uh, but what I have seen is extraordinary results, not only in the financial realm. I mean, our business grew to two countries um, in 12 months. Uh, we were doing uh, seven-figure revenues with very healthy six-figure profits. Uh, and continue to do that. We've got a you know great business which we're um, looking at selling at the moment, uh, and not one of many. Our old business, um, and you know we've done incredibly well financially. We have great investments and great investment opportunities cross our path uh, because of uh, we've proven ourselves in that realm of finance, I guess. But the best thing about it for me is. Um, to be honest, we've got pretty much the same lifestyle now that we had well before we had a seven-figure net worth, right? Um, we, we're not big on lifestyle. You know, we drive a Subaru. We're pretty frugal. I'm not into big, flashy, you know, things. It's not, not our bag. Um, but uh, we do get to travel. We enjoy that. The thing that makes the biggest difference for me, though, with the wealth that we've created is that I now get to sit at the table with the likes of people at the UN and shape the way the world looks because of how I invest my money into causes that have real meaning for me. And I'm very big supporter of the Hunger Project. Ever since my little boy James came along, um, it's been even more important for me. And uh, and now, you know, this is for me one of the key reasons to to grow bigger and to expand what we're doing and to empower more women is to mobilize more wealth to channel into these causes that are doing amazing things in the world. So that's what tonight is all about, ladies. The first thing I want to do is I've got a little poll here for you. So I want to get a, get to know you a little bit. It should have come up on your screen just now. And um, this is really cool where it's like we're in the same classroom all together. <laughs> all, uh, what you can do is you can answer, you can click on your screen. So if you come back to your computer screen, if you've wandered off, um, I've got a little poll there, which is what is your greatest financial frustration? I'm forcing you to um, choose one. I know for some of you it might be multiple, but what's your biggest? What's the what's the greatest sense of frustration you experience in, in the realm of your finances? This will just give us an idea of who's on the line, where you're up to. It will help me to kind of position what I'm sharing and give you content that's relevant to you. It's also good for everybody else to get a sense of who else is experiencing the same things um, that, that they're experiencing. So uh, take a little moment there. Oh, actually, this is one where you can choose multiple. Oh, look at that. Yes, you can choose multiple. I'm telling a big fib. So if more than one of those is relevant to you, please do check um, as many are as relevant for you. We've got 69% of you have actually filled that in. So I'm going to give you um, another 10 seconds or so. Click as many of those that are relevant for you um, as sources of frustration uh, in your wealth life and uh, we'll have a look at where you're up to. Okay, I'm going to close that poll now. Um, sorry if you haven't had a chance to vote, it's closing now. And then I'm going to share the results with you because this is really interesting. So for 71% of you on the line at the moment, you're experiencing not enough in the realm of finances. Uh, that's not uncommon um, in the world that I move in, even women who have hundreds of thousands of pounds in income, millions in the bank, can still experience not one of our cultural paradigms, which we'll be talking about here in a moment. 32% of you are acknowledging you don't manage it well. That's really awesome to see. 23% of you feeling you're not making a real difference with it. 13% of you experiencing difficulty talking with loved ones about money. That was a biggie for me for a long time that held, um, held us back 
uh, for Greg and I, um, but we really have uh, transformed that and it's made a big impact in, um, in what we're up to. And 5% of you have said other things. If you typed in other, if you clicked other things, um, throw it in the question box for me and let me know what other things are big frustrations for you because uh, I'd be very interested to to learn um, learn from you, you know, what's going on from you. So if, you, if you're one of the 5% that said um, other, I'd love to know what those sources of frustration are. But let's get sharing a bit of, um, of ways that we can have a look at things a bit differently. Ladies, I want to share with you my energy outcome matrix right now. You may have heard the old adage that money's just energy. Has anyone ever heard that before? I'm going to just take a quick little um, hands up poll on that. So raise your hand for me if you've ever heard that, that you know, energy's just money you know, or something along those lines. It's just, it's just energy. Money's just energy. Yeah, so it looks like um, over a third of you have heard that and maybe probably more um, who haven't found the little hand up button yet because it's going up and down. But I'd say probably close to a half by the looks of it have heard that. Now, that's fantastic if someone says, oh, you know, money's just energy. But here's the question. If it's just energy, what can you do with that piece of information? When I first heard that piece of information, I thought, well, that's very interesting, but I don't know what to do with that piece of information. Hello, little five pound note, you're just energy. Now what? It didn't empower me to change anything about myself or, or anything. to. I had no access point to transforming the results I was getting. And so over the years, as I've kind of got better at managing money and I've recognized my own blocks and released them and worked with many of my clients in, in this arena, um, it's become clear to me that there's this matrix of how we transform our energy into money. And um, here's, the, here's, the way to think, oops, here's the way to think about it. Um, and you can write this in on your notes page. If you haven't printed out your notes page, you can find it at bit.ly.com forward slash PPP notes. That's in the chat box there. Um, you can print out your notes page there. So this outer circle is called the cultural paradigm. So if you think of you've got all of the energy that you have on a day-by-day -day basis to do anything with, then you're going to apply it to something which may create the end result of money. That energy is going to go through a series of filters and get adjusted, tweaked, changed before it turns into the end result. And the first filter it goes through is the cultural paradigm you're living in. What this means is, and, and hopefully you're able to watch the video um, on the registration page for this webinar where I talked about the importance of cultural paradigm. If you didn't, go back and watch it because I don't have a lot of time to spend on it now. I don't want to repeat myself. But we live in a, in a very um, uh, distinct cultural paradigm that we're oblivious to how it impacts our energy. Then once the energy is passed through the filter of the cultural paradigm, it passes through the filter of your own personal paradigm. This is your own mindset around money. So then it kind of, you know, you get even less, you know, maybe you're down to, you know, 63% or something of, of your energy can now focus on doing something that might turn into money. And then there's a three-step process to actually creating and growing wealth that, um, that you then employ in the physical world. The first is the step of making money, the second is that of managing, and the third is that of multiplying. Another way of looking at it is the make phase is about turning your energy into money, right? So that's the energy comes through cultural paradigm, it comes through personal paradigm, and then you transmute that energy into money by doing something valuable for somebody else. And we'll talk about all of this as we go forward. At the manage phase, it's about bringing order to the money that you've already um, that you've already created. And then the multiplying phase is about getting your money to make more money. It's turning money into more money. So that's the overarching energy outcome matrix in, in kind of big picture overview. This is how you turn your energy into cash. Yeah, it passes through these filters. Let's let's explain each of them in a bit more detail. It'll make much more sense to you, I'm sure. So the current cultural paradigm we live in here in the West is really that money is the ultimate measure of value in our society. And therefore, it's the perfect way to ensure our low self-worth, especially as a gender, if you think about it that way. Oh, I've got to stop sharing my poll thing, don't I? Um, so you can see this. Uh, hang on, ladies. I'm just going to go back a, back a step here. Sorry, I forgot to stop sharing the poll. 
my brain's not really operating at this time of night. <laughs> so, um, so this is the energy outcome matrix and what you want to um, fill in on your notes. So you've got that cultural paradigm I was talking about there. Comes through the, the filter then of your personal paradigm. Then we've got the make phase, which is turning energy to money. The manage phase, which is bringing order to money. And then the multiply phase, which is turning your money into more money. Right, so that's the whole energy outcome matrix. Uh, the, just something important to say about this. I'm just going to leave it up so you can josh it down, um, given that it wasn't there while I was talking. Um, uh, is one of the big object, one of the big things I see when I'm working, especially with business owners, uh, and when they're kind of looking at their finances, they think that the solution to sorting out their financial problem is just getting their business working. Just just getting more clients or something. But it's a very short-sighted way of addressing a financial flow issue. If you're in the 71% of people on the line that are not experiencing enough money at the moment, enough financial result, and you're looking at only this part here, the turning energy into money, the make phase, that's either your job, like if you're in employment or if you're a business owner. If you focus only on that, trying to get more clients, you know, that sort of stuff, um, maybe getting a promotion, then you're missing one, two, three, four fifths of what it actually takes to create a fortune. So that's why it's so important for us to focus on all of these key areas. Does that make sense, gang? Give me a little wave, a bit of a hands up if that makes sense for you or, or, or let me know. Let me know. Okay, good. That's making sense. Excellent. So let's have a look then for, and we'll go into more detail about each of these pieces. So our current cultural paradigm is that the money is the ultimate measure of value in our society. And so therefore, it's the perfect way to ensure our low self-worth. If you look at your bank account and feel like a failure because you haven't got any money, perfect. You're right. That's a great way to keep you uh, low self-worth. Um, just because someone makes more money than you doesn't make them worth more than you as a person. I was talking with um, my um, my uh, collaborator in one of many, Annie Stoker, the other day. And she said, we've all just got a value of one. I get one, you get one, my dog gets one. We all just have one. This feeling that our worth is somehow tied up in our, how much money we make is incredible. But it is, it's, it's, um, it's insipid. It's uh, not insipid. What's the word? You know, it's like it's, it's tentacles are in everything. I found myself work walking through my village the other day. And we've got, you know, a decent sized house in my little village. But there's the big house in the village. And I caught myself thinking, oh, I wonder who lives in the big house. They must be very important. And, and a sense that they were somehow more valuable than I was just because they own a big house. That's the cultural paradigm filter at play. It's there. It's, it's inherent for all of us unless we can catch it, you know. The other thing I've noticed about money is that it is used as the greatest excuse um, to hold us back from our power because it's totally non-negotiable. It's totally measurable. If you don't, um, if you don't, if, if you can't do something um, because you can't afford it, you can say, well, look at my bank account. There's no money there, right? Totally reasonable excuse for not stepping up. And it's an agreed cultural truth that we need money in order to do anything, insert whatever you want in that blank, right? anything at all. So it's like a cultural truth in this capacity. These things are not true, by the way. This is just the cultural paradigm we live in. Money is a huge cultural blind spot for us here in the West. And one of the things that I think we need to bring big awareness to, because awareness brings power, if we can shift the personal paradigm of enough men and women, we can actually shift the cultural paradigm for all of us. So if so, while we can't change a cultural paradigm directly, we just need to bring awareness to it for ourselves, catch ourselves thinking things like, oh, they're better than me because they've got a better car or, oh, maybe I can, you know, help that person out because I'm making more money than them so I must have something of value to offer them. You know, this kind of tying our value up in how much money we have or can make is ridiculous. It's wrong, untrue. Um, but we need to catch ourselves doing it. We can change it at the personal level, but the only way to change it at a cultural level is to shift the fabric of society, and the fabric of society is made up of all of our own personal paradigms. 
So let's get on with having a look at our personal paradigm, which is the next piece of this energy outcome matrix. The personal paradigm is that um, is basically made up of your mindset. And, and I almost don't like the word mindset because it's also emotions. And I almost don't like just mindset and emotions because it's actually your body mind. This is where I think a lot of personal development that many of us have experienced misses the mark. And again, I'm just going to do a quick little hands up poll. I'm going to bring all the hands down for a moment. How many of you have done, read a book, been to a seminar on personal growth of some sort? Just raise your hand up for me so I can get a sense of how many of you are educated in, um, in this arena already. Let's get a Put your hand up and leave it up for me, lady, so I can see. So, okay, yeah, over 50% of you have already got your hands up. So I'd say probably closer to 75% of you on the line have had some experience in this already. This is, the, this is very common in our community. Here's the thing, if you've done some work around this and you've experienced maybe a small breakthrough but not a big one, it's probably because, um, and this is something I pr pride one of many on on what we're doing, is that there, there's a body mind to it that sometimes gets overlooked with, with all of the mass, like mindfulness and mindset break, breakthrough and, you know, um, headspace meditation and all of this stuff is brilliant. But if we don't get it in the actual body, moving in the body, then it can still be holding us back. And so we really want to recognize that. And that's one of the things I love about the work that we're doing um, and that we will be doing at Be Wealth and all of our retreats is, um, is uh, that we really do shift from out of the mind and the heart and get it in the cells of the body and the DNA. The other um, cause that may have um, held you back from not actually getting results is the definition of your unconscious, right? Your unconscious is the part of you that creates your reality. And by definition, it's that part of you that you're not conscious of. It's the part of you that beats your heart, grows your hair, which you're not conscious of how you grow your hair, right? But it also creates your reality. And I know for over 75% of you online, this isn't new news. If it is new news, then go read some great books by Deepak Chopra or Tony Robbins or any of those guys. They've all got some great perspectives on that, um, masculine perspectives, different perspectives to me, but they... But they do um, make the point that, you know, our, our, it's our thoughts that create our reality. Here's my thoughts about it. Women are by nature creative. You know, we create life in our wombs, you know. We are by our nature creative. So we can, we will either be, we, we are creating every single day, every single day. We're either creating abundance or we're creating drama. <laughs> we're creating abundance or we're creating problems. We are inherent in our nature creative. And so our unconscious is the place where things like self-worth, fear, guilt, not enough, where all of these things are stored. And if we have these senses of lack and, um, and negative emotions and so on, then what we find is that it's, that is the reality that we start to really be creating in the world. This is kind of hitting the mark, ladies. We need to start transforming those things at the unconscious level. Um, now, because I don't have a lot of time to go into uh, exactly how to transform all of that here, at Be Wealth, this is what we're spending heaps of time on is how to transform your personal paradigm. We spend a lot of time on that in the body, not just in the mind. Um, I do want to give you a little freebie to say thanks for coming along tonight. Who likes freebies? Give me a wave if you like freebies. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! So um, this is a, a, a wealth attraction meditation, which I created a couple of years back. And I created it because for me, one of the things that made the biggest difference in turning my finances from hand to mouth, like feast or famine, you know, just getting by, to um, to really getting into my flow was listening to a wealth attraction CD every day for about 30 days. I did it. And um, do you know what? Things just really turned on their ear for me. It wasn't the only thing I was doing, but it was very much a part of it. So I'd like to help you prime your unconscious for opportunity and abundance. We usually sell this meditation for £19.95. But if you go to bit.ly bit.ly slash meditation request, 
there's just a little form you fill in there and um, because I only thought about this today I haven't had time to get my web developers to build a fancy website or anything for you so if you put your um, name and details in there I'll send it out to you tomorrow just by regular old um, email <laughs> I didn't have I just went oh I'm gonna do that today because I don't have time to teach all the stuff I want so I'll just give them the freebie um, so uh, please uh, please share that on um, if, if there's other women in your world that you think would um, benefit from that, please do feel free to share it and share it widely. Uh, so continuing on our merry little way here. So we've talked about the cultural paradigm, which we can't change directly. We have to focus on our personal paradigm. These are the things that filter the energy and turn it into money. But then we get up to these three shifts, make, manage and multiply. Now, Let's focus on each of these in a bit of detail. Let's have a look at the make phase first of all. Whoops, we're just going to go through all those. Whoops, Daisy, here we go. The make phase. Making is where we take any of the energy that gets through our cultural paradigm and through our personal paradigm, which is probably half of the available energy to us because the rest being blocked off by limiting beliefs, negative emotions, um, you know, um, rubbish cultural beliefs that we live in. And now we've got half of the energy that we could potentially have available to us to do something fruitful with to make some money. Now we're at this phase. How do we turn that energy into money? Well, basically there's two ways you can try and do it. One is do it really frantically. And the other one is to do it fruitfully. Most of us are doing it frantically. How many of you, by quick hands up, can relate to this picture? <laughs> Ah, yes, we all have our moments like this, don't we, ladies? Ah, trying to balance, you know, the kids, feeding everybody. You're trying to fit, close the deal on the phone while you're cooking dinner. It's nuts, right? We're frantic. We're absolutely frantic. Here's the thing. How long have you been that frantic for? Raise your hand if you've been frantic for a while now. How many of you have been frantic for a while now? <laughs> Quite a few of us, yes? Quite a few of us. Uh, if you've been frantic for a while, um, here's the thing. If nothing changes, nothing's going to change. And if you continue operating in that frantic way around your finances, you're going to be stuck at frantic forever, right? If you want to change it, you've got to change it. And the thing is, most of us don't know how to change it. And what I want to share with you is a step which I, which makes perfect sense to me and I've always kind of instinctively understood. Once I got it, it seemed instinctive, but no one seems to get it. This is the thing. Here's the energy you've got left over to apply towards wealth creation and money creation after it's gone through your cultural paradigms and your personal paradigms. It's however much it is, 20%, 50%, 70%, whatever, some energy. If you want to turn that energy into money, you have to pass that energy through something that I call a value filter. And it's not a filter of what's valuable to you, but can you turn your energy into something that's valuable for others, that's valuable for others. Um, I've got, uh, are you on the webinar there, babe? Um, Kath, I think, is, or someone from the team is. Can someone on the team put in the chat box for me the meditation link? It's bit.ly slash uh, bit.ly slash meditation request. We've got a few people writing in the question box asking for that. So I'll type it in the chat box for you, ladies, so you can um, just click on it and go through and, and um, get that meditation. So your energy passes through a value filter, but the value filter is turn your energy into something that has value for other people. If it's not something that has value for other people, then you don't get money back because they don't see it as valuable. So if you're finding it difficult to sell your goods and services right now, one of my first questions will be, do people really want that thing? Is it valuable for them? Yeah. Yes, there might be personal paradigm issues. There might be mindset issues, but there could also be this issue of, is it valuable? Because a lot of us while we think we're channeling energy down a value filter to turn it into something valuable, we're actually channeling it down different filters. It might be a filter for acknowledgement. So you might be busy, busy, busy in your business, frantic, frantic, frantic in your job, and 
you're not actually providing value for people, but you are providing something which gets acknowledgement or respect or uh, recognition back. So you're turning your energy into respect, recognition, acknowledgement because it's going through a different filter. And there are hundreds of other filters. Does this make sense? The only way to turn energy into money is to turn it into something which has value for others. So this is the first part of understanding value is making sure that what you apply your energy to has real value for someone else. And this is, um, you can write this on your notes page, prosperity principle number three. It's the principle of adding value. You need to add value to the lives of other people if you want to be a success. As Albert Einstein said, and by all means, share this on social with the hashtag one of many. We'd love you to. Um, oops, Daisy, come back. My slides are getting carried away with me. Ah, ah, here we go. He says, strive not to be a success, but to be a value. Because if you're striving to be a success, you're sending your energy down a filter where you might achieve success as everybody else would see it, but not finance because you're not being of value, right? This is the key. This is the key. Does this make sense, ladies? Am I hitting a chord with this? Is this, is this kind of landing well for you? Is that landing well for you? Great. <laughs> Melissa's just saying, I just shared your meditation link with the ladies of Damsels in Success. I hope that's okay. That's totally fine, Melissa. <laughs> Share it with as many as you like. So everyone's saying, yes, 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 that makes lots of sense. Very good. Now, the next thing about understanding value is that you need to make sure that what you're applying your energy to is something that harnesses your unique strengths, talents, and flow. And this brings me to the prosperity principle number five, which again, you can jot down on your notes page, which is the principle of self-expression. The principle of self-expression is that you are unique. And I believe that the great, I don't know if you're allowed to quote yourself, but hey, here I am, I'm doing it. <laughs> I believe the great creator would not have created us all as separate and individual if there was not something of value in our uniqueness. You are brilliant at things that come naturally to you and the things that come naturally to you are far more um, valuable to me than the things you have to work your butt off to try and do. So what are your natural talents, your natural strengths, your natural abilities? That's what you want to be spending your time and your energy on. Does this make sense, ladies? So let's get you into flow. If you've never done your Wealth Dynamics profile, I highly recommend you do that. It's a great way of understanding your flow. So the next part when it comes to shifting from frantic to fruitful, which is my invitation, is to shift from productive, whoops a daisy, uh, to which by definition is being able to generate, create, enhance, or bring forth goods and services like so many of us focus on, I've got to have a productive day and you get to the end of the day and go, oh yeah, so productive today. Total masculine energy, total recipe for burnout. Instead, shift to becoming fruitful. Definition, producing an abundant growth as of fruit. Producing an abundant growth as of fruit. If we focus on fruitful, then we can take a lesson from the beautiful apple tree in my backyard. And my apple tree teaches me this. You cannot get an apple from me in the winter. You cannot get an apple from me in the spring. You will only get an apple from me in the late summer and autumn. And if you don't nurture and nourish me in all those other seasons, then you won't get any apples from me anytime. <laughs> As women, we are cyclical beings. We have monthly cycles, daily cycles, annual cycles. We have seasons every month, every day, every year. We need to honour, acknowledge and nourish these. Trying to be just as productive on a day where you've, um, you know, when you're uh, halfway through your monthly cycle as when you're in the middle of having your period is ridiculous. You know it's ridiculous, yet still you try and do it rather than giving yourself the freedom to have your in retreat days. It's so important to retreat. And then you're out days, right? Recognize this stuff and focus on being fruitful. There's also a few myths that keep us really busy and frantic, which I want to dispel a few of just now. 
Um, here's a few. Here's the myths. Number one, and there's the truths that are actually there. So the first is I'm too busy. The next is once I do X, then I can do Y. And then the third is I don't have time. So then there's heaps of others, but I just want to talk about a few of them. So the first one, I'm too busy. A better, uh, oops, a better answer to I'm too busy is it's just not a priority for me. Now, you can't say that to people because it's not nice. If someone says to me, can you babysit the kids for me next Thursday night? You can't just say, you know what, your kids are not a priority for me. <laughs> However, I recommend on the inside that you get really clear with yourself because if you're always saying, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, then you will experience always being too busy. I mean, my slides are on automatic progress and it's driving me nuts here, ladies, so my apologies for that. Um, so uh, if, it's, if it's not a prior, the, 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 the um, what am I trying to say about this? If it's say, I'm too busy, if you're saying I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy on the outside all the time, then on the inside, you're also saying I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, which gives you the experience of always being too busy. But the truth of the matter is that it's not a priority because here's, here's the simple fact of the matter. Two weeks ago on a Thursday when I was too busy to do a lot of things. I'd turned down some appointments. I'd called up some people and said, I, ha I, can't, I can't do this today. No, I'm too busy. My son got sick. He had a really high fever. But I didn't say to him, I'm too busy. I didn't say to him, I'm too busy to, uh, to lie on the couch and watch Peppa Pig with you today. He didn't want to move. He was so still, which is so weird for someone who's so active. I didn't say that to him because it's not the truth. The fact was that he was the priority. I wasn't too busy for him. I was too, I was, and I wasn't even too busy for the other things. They were just not priorities. And he superseded all priorities. So we always have time for the things that are important to us. So the correct answer, rather, if, you know, rather than I'm too busy, is it's not a priority. Now, on the outside, you say things so that you keep friends and, and family members, you know, reasonably happy. <laughs> But on the inside, recognize, actually, you know what, that's not a priority for me. This whole thing of once I do X, then I can do Y. There's, it's, it's like a, it's a false economy, this procrastination postponement thing. I see this a lot with women who want to do events with us. Um, and I remember uh, back in 2013, no, it was before James was born, 2011, I was selling a program uh, called the Lifestyle Business Program and um, there was a woman came up to the back of the room and she said to me, Joe, I really want to do your program but uh, my mum's really sick. So once my mum, you know, gets over her, you know, gets over her ill health, then I'm going to be able to focus on my business. And I said, oh, gosh, I totally get that. No worries. Totally get it. No problems. You know, let us know any time. So just out of interest, how long has your mum been unwell for, poor thing? She said, oh, she's been like it for 11 years. Now, expecting that she will start her business and start stepping into her power and start creating the life that she wants next month because her mum's going to magically transform in health-wise is just not fair to her and not fair to her mum. It's giving all the power away. So my general rule of thumb is this, ladies. If, if the thing that you're saying, I'll do it once, has been in place for more than three months, more than 90 days, I would put forward that it's going to stop you in the long term and you should progress on things that you want to progress on regardless and find a way while that thing is still in place. It's just a general rule of thumb. Yes, there's some exceptions, but challenge it if you think that. If it's been more than three months, it will probably always be so is the general rule of thumb. And then when it comes to I don't have time, well, we all know that we all only have 24 hours in a day. Um, you know, there are, there are people in the world I look at and go, how on earth do you get all of that done? They still have the same 24 hours. It's through team. It's through collaboration. It's through wild prioritisation. And there are people I look at and I say, how on earth do you get so little done? And it's through, you know, not applying all of these sorts of things. So we all have the same amount of time. You are capable of just as much as uh, me, as Oprah Winfrey, as anyone else, provided that you have the uh, purpose and the intention that that's what you want for your life. It's as simple as that. 
So, ladies, here's the choice. You can either continue frantic, mad, insane, multitasking, nightmare, aggressive, masculine energy, productive, get it done, drrr, superwoman, or you can shift to fruitful. Who wants frantic and who wants fruitful? Please write in if you want fruitful in the question box. Who's up for fruitful? Let me know. Who's up for fruitful? <laughs> you get to choose right now. Write it down on your page. I choose fruitful. I choose fruitful. Very good. I'm glad to see it, ladies. All righty. So let's come back to, we've said cultural paradigm, personal paradigm. Let's have a look at this second step now, which is the manage phase. Now, manage is where we bring, remember we said at the beginning, we're bringing order to our money. But for most women, we spend our whole lives avoiding it. The choice here with this step, ladies, that the second shift I want you to make is from avoidance to engagement at a very deep level with your finances. Let me explain. Most of us avoid the issue when it comes to our finance. We go to our local coffee shop, do a touch of shopping, sit down, stress about the fact that we haven't got some any money and then go out and just buy one more thing and put it on the credit card because it makes us feel better. Not all of us, but we've all done it at some point probably. Would you agree? All done a little bit of that at some point? <laughs> um, if you avoid the issue of managing your money effectively, it will never change. It will never, ever change right? How long have you been ignoring it for so far? How long have you been avoiding the issue so far? Have a look at how long you've been avoiding, look at where you are and do you think if you continue to avoid it's going to get better? Do you think if you continue to focus only on maybe getting new clients to your business or focus only on um, you know, getting that promotion that it's going to really turn your money situation around? Absolutely doesn't. One of my mates in Australia is an amazing speaker. His name's Paul Blackburn. He runs an eight-figure business. So they do tens of millions um, a year. And uh, when I first met him, he and his wife were scraping along on 50 grand a year. Like, So we've kind of gone through the growth together. We're really close friends. He was the MC at our wedding. And he said, uh, he said to me once, Joe, you know something really interesting for me? What we did when we got really clear about how we were managing our money we were spending 10% more than we earned every year. It didn't matter if we were earning 30 grand or 130 grand because we'd had up years and we'd had down years. If it was 30 grand, I spent 33 grand. If it was 130 grand, I spent 143 grand. Um, didn't matter. He said there was always just that 10% more on my credit cards at the end of the year. It's like a set point. And he avoided the issue of actually doing anything to manage the money. So it's a very powerful thing. But when, what we know about millionaire women, women who have a seven-figure net worth, they manage. They don't avoid. They manage. They nurture. They nourish. They really engage with their finances. 68%, and this comes from the book The Millionaire Woman Next Door by Thomas Stanley, 68% of them know exactly how much they spent on clothing and shelter, power, um, clothing and shelter and food um, every year. And they describe that knowing that gives them power, control, and confidence, which makes perfect sense. I look at my sister, Kath. Now, Kath, for many, many years, has um, ignored the first step, the make phase of money. She's been in kind of vehicles that didn't create a lot of value for other people and therefore didn't mobilize um, great things. But she kicks butt at this phase. She knows exactly how much she spends on food, clothing, shelter, wine, chips, you know, presents, everything. She's the best budgeter I have ever, ever met. And I know that now she's stepped into um, into a role where she's got the make phase sorted, that she's going to absolutely bloom and blossom in this arena. There's no doubt about it because she's an awesome money manager. Now, there is then another group of millionaire women called the non-budgeters. I fall into this category. The non-budgeters are the other 32% who don't know exactly how much they spend on food, clothing and shelter every year. I, I couldn't tell you my exact numbers. I've got some instinctive numbers. But the difference is we invest first and then only spend what's left over. Remember I said we have a pretty frugal lifestyle, me and my husband. I mean, we do nice things. We travel, you know, we don't. We, we, our great tenant is value for money. And to be honest, I could never, I don't think I would ever, ever spend 30, 40, 50,000 pounds on a car. I just couldn't do it. I don't see the value for money in it. You know, we drive a Subaru. We're Australian. 
um, it's just not a big deal. So for us, we invest our money first and then whatever's left over is available for housekeeping, lifestyle, all of those other things. And if we can't make ends meet, then we ramp up the make, uh, we ramp up the make phase some more. Women millionaires are significantly more frugal than their male counterparts. So even millionaire women um, are even more frugal than male uh, millionaires and generally millionaire women are a totally cheap date, you know. Um, they're not out for the most expensive things. In fact, the average millionaire woman has never spent more than $400 on an outfit, a suit in her life. It's quite extraordinary. So just have a look at your spending habits. Now, one very simple way of managing your money is something we call your money tree. It's a really simple money management system. I don't kind of have time to go into it in wild amounts of detail right now, but suffice to say, some of your money goes towards housekeeping. Some of it goes straight into a fund for growth, and that's investing in your financial future. That's the multiply phase, which comes next. Some for saving, some for education, some for contribution, and some for lifestyle. And this has to get busted up every month, use it every month, um, because otherwise you don't enjoy the journey. It's not about postponing everything for some later date. So you need to have some simple money management system in place so that you can hit all of your financial goals at the same time. But the shift that has to be made at the energetic level, ladies, is you can either be avoidant, you can continue to avoid the issue, or you can really engage with your finances and take on managing your money. And I've got a picture of a woman with a baby here because nurturing and nourishing is instinctive to us. You know, I remember when James was born, our whole life revolved around how many breastfeeds, how much sleep, how many pooey nappies. Mums out there, you've all been through it. Imagine if you applied that same kind of care, love and nurturing to your finances. How would that transform? Do you know what I mean? That's the shift. So are you going to continue to avoid or are you going to engage with your money? How many of you are going to engage with your money? Let me know. Write in the question box. Let me know. Is it you? Are you going to engage? Say yes to engage if you're going to engage. Let's do it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's engage. Let's engage. Good, good, good. This is fantastic. Hooray. Thank you. Thank you. This is a shift. Write it down on your paper. I am engaging with my money. I'm going to nurture it, nourish it and love it. So the third part, the third shift we need to make is around the multiplier, right? The multiplier is where we take a portion of the money that was in our growth, um, our growth account there from the money tree a portion of it, about 10% of everything that comes in as a minimum, you want to be putting towards multiplying, getting that money working for you to make you more money. Now, this is what a lot of us would call investments. Um, and when it comes to investments as women, usually we ignore it. The vast majority of women ignore the conversation whatsoever. They might have some savings, but they're not really multiplying their wealth in that perspective. The choice is, though, to step into education. Most of us are what I call unblissfully ignorant. <laughs> we don't know what we don't know and we don't enjoy that we don't know, but we feel too busy to do anything about getting to know something, right? But if you don't learn how to invest now, when are you going to do it? Oh, when you're making enough money in your business or when you're making enough money in your job? By then it'll be too late because you have some money and you have the problem. It's these things have got to happen in tandem, right? You want to be constantly educating yourself in these areas. Now, I don't have time to spend a lot of time teaching you my investing principles right now. Um, that's something we do at Be Be the Be Wealth Retreat. We look at the levels of investor and what you should be, how you should be planning and where you should be um, educating yourself. But I want to share with you my top line secret of investing. My top line secret of investing is this, ladies. If you want to turn money into more money, there's one simple thing you've got to multiply your money by. Who has some ideas about what that might be? Who has some ideas? What might be this? Type it into me. What What are some ideas? What do you think is the magic multiplier to turn money into more money? Charlotte says compound interest. Ah, number two. Emma says effort. Ah, definitely not effort, Emma. Definitely not effort. Sophie's nailed it. It's education. If you want to turn money into more money, the only difference between those who do and those who don't, because we're talking 
at the passive end of the spectrum, I don't believe in passive income and that's a story for another day, but at the, oh, I've got a team call tomorrow, very good, oops. Um, um, but at, we're talking at the passive end of the spectrum. It's not about effort. It's not about working hard to turn money into more money. And, yes, compound interest is one way of turning money into more money, but what the secret is here is education. It's education. Again, quoting myself, but I believe that the main contributor to financial lack, and 73% of us on the line said we don't have enough, is lack of financial education. And I'm in good company with that because Warren Buffett said, if you only have $10,000 to invest, which is what, 5,000 pounds, give or take, invest it in yourself. He says investing in your own education is what you should spend your money on first and foremost, which is really important. So, ladies, here's the third shift for you. Are you going to stay ignorant? Are you going to continue to leave it up to your husband? Like some of you were really honest just now. Some of you were saying, you know, I'm a bit too busy focusing on my business. I've left all that to my husband. You know, thank you for those shares. Um, here's what, though. You can, if you, you can continue to stay ignorant, but you really need to get educated. So how many of you are committed to getting educated around how to turn your money into more money? Say yes to me. Say I'm getting educated. If you're up for educated, write it on your page, write it in the chat box. Who's getting educated? Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. You've got to continue this journey. You've got to get educated. It's the only, only um, recipe. It's the only difference between you and those who are making great money is that they just know how to do it, right? And they're confident. Education leads to that confidence. So the final little piece I want to share with you here, ladies, before um, uh, before we complete is some good news and some really important uh, distinction. 2.4 million women in the UK have more than £25,000 in savings accounts alone. It's a damn fine start. Wouldn't you agree? There are now more women millionaires aged between 18 and 34 here in the UK than men. A damn fine start. It's estimated that here in this country by 2025, we will hold more than 60% of the nation's personal wealth. So if you are not in these statistics already, and I know some of you on the line are, and your role in one of many is as a mentor and helping others to join us in these statistics, you get to choose right now. If you choose fruitful, if you choose engaging, if you choose educating, you're choosing to join these women because that is the outcome of those three shifts. It's that simple, ladies. It brings me to prosperity principle number two, which is the principle of purpose. The only thing that can unpack all of this is if you're not on purpose and have a powerful purpose for your wealth creation. For what purpose do you want to create and manifest? One of my great clients, um, Bev Jones, wanted to do a program with me, had no money, but was really clear why she wanted to do it. She said, I'm going to go out and manifest that money. And I, I hear this a bit, so sometimes, I, sometimes people do, some people don't. I said, okay, go for it, Bev. You know, three weeks later, because she was so clear on the purpose, she came back and she had found all of the money she needed for her program and she'd got some more clients for her business for her own you know, well-being as well, which is fantastic. So you've got to have this principle of purpose in place. So I just want to ask you just to think for a moment and maybe start sharing some things in the chat box for me. Let me get a sense of you. What's the vision for your life? And not just for your life, but true leadership is in what world we want to leave for our children, our grandchildren, indeed seven generations from now. What difference do you want to make on this planet? What, for what purpose make great wealth? What difference do you want to make? I want seven generations from now. Actually, I want it one generation from now, but seven generations from now, no child will live, be born into hunger. No mother or child will die unnecessarily in childbirth because of poverty and lack of access to basic, basic medical resources. No woman, no young girl will be married early because of um, uh, because her family are hungry and it's an economic imperative. I am a stand for the end of world hunger because that is what you know that is what I believe feeds all this and and that means the end of poverty globally. That's my big vision for my life. What I'm up for, and I know what that's going to take here in the West 
is money. We need to mobilize money to support our partners in the developing world that are already doing this thing, right? This is the work of the Hunger Project. Uh, you know, in the developing world, people are already transforming their world. All they need is education, and in order to get educated, they need money to pay for it. That's it. That's all they need. Everything else they can take care of themselves. Well, you know, um, acute emergencies um, aside. But chronic persistent hunger, it's education that's the key. So I'm a stand. I'm a stand to mobilise wealth here in the West for those women in, in the developing world that need that support. That's who, that's who I am. That's my stand. I know that that is through empowering and educating women like yourselves and it's through mobilising a lot of money personally so I can send it where I want. Like I said, I get to sit at the table of amazing, amazing um, uh, transformation agents we, because I'm I'm buying a place at that table with the money that I give, right? So it's a really powerful thing. But what's yours? What's yours? Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Marilyn says transforming education. Karine says gender equality for my daughter. Here, here to that. I believe that my my um, vision that I'm talking about here, Karina, is going to take a feminization of our culture, big time, gender equality, right? Helen says, creating a life of passion and purpose, serving others to make an impact for the greater good to my family and the society we lived in. Sophie says, no woman should be forced into marriage. These are amazing. Emma says, saving the oceans. Catherine says that everyone has someone to turn to in a crisis. Kelly says, stopping the use of poisons in the production of food for the world. Ladies, these things are, I was about to swear, I'm going to swear, these things are fucking vital to the sustainability of our planet. And while we're dicking around in our own lack and poverty and limited thinking, we're not stepping into transforming this. Not a one of you has said anything that could not have been, could be greatly mobilised by great wealth and resource and that is what this is about, right? You transforming your power around money, whether you're experiencing it as lack or just not being fully self-expressed or if you know that there's a greater level you could step to, like even more, you not stepping into that is causing great, great challenges for the world. So we need to re-establish our financial power. And that's why I'm so, so passionate about applying and looking in depth at all of these areas at this retreat that I mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, which is the Be Wealth, Your Life's Legacy Retreat, which is coming up in January. I'd like to take just five minutes or so to share this with you, ladies, um, because I know for some of you on the line, it's exactly the right next step for you. And I want to give you the opportunity to say yes to it at a really, really great deal today. I do need to start this by saying um, it's been a really popular retreat. We have only just um, launched it at our One Woman Conference and it's been incredibly popular. We only have 12 places remaining. And bearing in mind how many women registered for this um, webinar, I fully expect that they will uh, sell out, if not right now, because um, uh, we've still got hundreds of ladies on the line. Um, if not right now, then probably within the next, uh, probably within the next day or so. So if this is, if your heart is telling you yes at any stage as we're chatting here, I would say go for it. And let's sort your head out later, right? <laughs> so the um, the retreat, as I said, there's 12 places left and it's coming up in January. And what it's about is a deep transformation in your relationship with money so that you can become truly magnetic in this arena. You attract miracles, you attract opportunity, you attract voracious support from amazing women and you open up networks that you just could not even begin to imagine because of getting everything aligned and in the body around, um, around money from a, a personal paradigm perspective. It's really, a, if you, when you leave this workshop, when you leave this retreat, you will have shifted money from a source of limitation or stress in your life to a powerful ally to create the world that you desire. And that's what I would be my greatest gift. Let me, let me help you to see this as a delicious, wonderful companion to create the world just how you want it. You will leave this uh, retreat accessing, re having accessed incredibly powerful wealth mentors. We're getting some fabulous, fabulous women who are coming 
to give of their time and their energy, women who've got it sorted in this area, to hold your hand and mentor you and you will get personal access to them and sit there with them and nut out. What are the first steps for you? So you leave this workshop with a plan for the first next steps, a very clear 30-day plan. This is not about strategic planning. I want to be clear about that. That is masculine paradigm. Feminine paradigm is about a vision, having a sense of the direction and, and a calling forth and then knowing what are the first few powerful steps in that area, getting on the path and then being open to the miracles because usually we accelerate far more quickly because of our powerful access to the feminine archetypes, especially the sorceress, which we'll be talking about at this event. Um, you will leave this event with even more power than you already have in the realm of your finance and it is going to be absolutely extraordinary. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. So um, in the area of the cultural paradigm, we're really going to be making sure that you get the impact that our culture is having on your current results. I would put forward that by and large we are oblivious to this and ignorant of it. So we want you to transform that so you can be free of judgment around money, judgment around others, judgment of yourself. It will allow you to stop playing small because of fear of what other people might think, etc., and then help you to step into your true financial set point. Not where you are at the moment, but your true self-expression. For some people, that's billionaire. For some people, that's millionaire. For some people, that's a great income of 40 grand a year and being able to um, express themselves fully through their community work, you know. I think one of the big problems about personal development is there's this kind of thing that everybody should be a millionaire. No, we shouldn't. Not everyone wants to be, needs to be. There's some we need to get clear on what are your goals and what's the culture telling you, right? Let's find your goals. At a personal paradigm level, you will identify and release your personal blocks to financial success. You'll overcome fear and guilt around money. You'll embrace your financial set point, your true financial set point, and we'll, we'll find out what that is. Um, I've got this um, saying that uh, um, like a rainforest, when it comes to growth, women grow unchecked when they're free of limitations. So when you release your limitations, you will grow unchecked like the rainforest. Some of us are big, tall rainforest, like Oprah Winfrey, in the realm of a financial rainforest, is a big, tall tree like reaching to the sky. And then there's people like me. I'm never going to be a big, tall tree reaching to the sky and I don't want to be. I'm probably, you know, a middle-sized tree. <laughs> Perhaps I'm a vine or a creeper. And then there's some people in the world who are like little they're the little bushes that are actually got great medicinal qualities um, and they're not massively tall at all but they've got other things that are really important. What is it for you? And stop going after what's not yours find what your destined or, or soul set point is for finance and let's express that in the world. And as I said, what I believe we at One of Many do different to everybody else um, in this arena is we solidify any energetic shifts you make in a mindset perspective into the body. It's not just mindfulness here, even though we know mindfulness is amazing. Um, then from the make phase, you're going to, we're going to finish off the seven wealth power, um, soft power wealth principles and get them in your body so that you're believing them, knowing them to be true and living them every day. You'll be applying the archetype. We do a lot of work with feminine archetypes because when you look around in the world, there's not a lot of great examples of feminine, um, feminine strength and feminine power, soft power. So we use archetypes to access that in the, at one of many, and one of them is the sorceress. Um, now, the sorceress is amazing. She's the one who's able to manifest. She, she can create from nothing. She's extraordinary. So how do we apply that archetype to the world of our finance? How do we do that? You'll learn to manifest in both the energetic world and in the physical world. You know, there's, some, there's great people out there who give you all of the, you know, meditate till, till the money falls on your head kind of training. And then there's great business mentors and, you know, kind of strategy mentors out there. At one of many, what we do, because we're a community, it's not just me and my gurudom, because I'm certainly not the guru. What we have is a community of amazing women and we provide a platform where we come together and share. And so we have access to all of it, energetic and physical. It's extraordinary. From the management phase, 
you'll implement the money tree management system while you're here and get wealth growing quickly and easily and you'll be able to remove all angst from money matters when it's communicating with your loved ones you know how where should you be putting your money etc we're going to get it clean get you get you great with it get you feeling good about it we're going to learn some powerful financial distinctions in the multiply phase so that you can really step in and grow your wealth and you'll work personally. I mean, one on one, sitting around a table and telling them where you're up to and nutting it out with successful wealth mentors to create a plan of action so that you'll leave these two days utterly transformed. It's being held here just near my house in the Cotswolds, in the heart of uh, Shakespeare country at a really lovely stylish hotel here. It's really, really lovely where we're going. Beautiful jacuzzi and pool and tennis courts, you know, just gorgeous, really lovely uh, area, beautiful fresh air. And the dates are the 23rd to the 24th of January. Now, we're not running this again until 2016. So do whatever you can to make these dates because it's the only time we'll be running it. And as I said, there's only 12 places left on this particular retreat. Now, it's a two-day retreat for a reason. One of the things I've noticed about women's personal growth is we actually don't need to go and check into like a seven-day boot camp, walk on hot coals, break arrows kind of thing to get to get the changes. That's, that's very masculine approach, right? All we need to do is unplug. We just need to retreat. Because of our cyclical nature, our bodies are designed for this. That all we need to un we just need to unplug from our families, from our lives, from everything, to not have to cook dinner, to not have to think about business, to not have to do anything, and just go in. And if we do that, then we grow. So that's why it's just two days, one night, um, especially because for a lot of women, you know, if you're anything like me and you have a young family, just getting one night away is a big ask. Having said that, we have an optional, what we're calling a retreat primer on the Thursday evening, on the evening of the 22nd, which is with our one of many trainers, with Susie and Annie, which will help prime your unconscious to make the work of the retreat go even deeper if you can make it. If, like me, you couldn't make a, an extra night, that's fine. You're not going to miss out on any content. It's just there to help those who can go even deeper. So when you join us for the retreat, we'll be in touch with you and find out whether you want to join us for the um, primer on the Thursday evening. Now, the office price on this retreat is £1,398, and that includes not only your tuition and your workbooks and all of the access to the amazing wealth mentors that you get, and the you know, resources that you're going to be getting at the event, but it's also your accommodation uh, for the night that you're there, all of the food, yummy, yummy food for the duration of the event, and all of that stuff, right? Access to all of the facilities and resources. So everything's included in that price. Um, there's, uh, there's nothing extra for those two days of the retreat. We've also got some additional support to help, things, help you with things. Um, your money tree training, we cover this at the event, but a lot of women um, I know want to listen to it again and go over it and, and really get it. Um, so we're going to provide you the video, audio worksheets and transcripts for that whole system before you even come. It'll be available um, as a download in our online um, beautiful, we've got such a beautiful online library. I love it. It's so lovely. So that'll be in there for you um, uh, within a week or two. You've got a personal wealth planner, which is a really simple Excel spreadsheet. You'll be learning to use it at the event um, at how to implement your money tree system. And we want to make sure that you've got tools so that you can continue all of the unconscious processing that you're going to be doing at this event. So that starts with the awakening process. Now, the awakening process is a process to help you identify any unconscious blocks you've got to success. Um, we've got our limitation release process, which is a meditation to help you let go of any of those. And the wealth attraction meditation, which is um, the gift that I gave you all, but we're including that in this as well. Uh, let's see. We've got, um, whoop days here we go. Ah, my slides have gone a bit out of control. So as I said, there's only 12 places remaining on this, um, on the Be Wealth Retreat, ladies. And we have a webinar only special, which is the same special that I gave to the ladies at the One Woman Conference a few months ago. So I'm opening the doors on this special again. If you, uh, if you miss out, either because it's sold out or um, it'll be closing in seven days, this particular special, um, then, um, then you know, that's it. We won't have it at this price again. So it's 1198, which is a saving of £200. Or if 
you know, cash flow is a challenge and, and I can hear from a few of you that it is. We've also divided into four monthly payments of just three twenty nine. dollars um, There is a saving if you pay in full because there's less admin for us. So, uh, so um, highly recommend you pay in full if you can, but we have got that payment there for you. And the good news is if you look at the dates, you don't have to have the whole amount paid before you even come to the webinar. We know you'll be good for it after because that's what we're about <laughs> before you come to the webinar, before you come to the retreat, I mean. Um, so, uh, so we're trying to set this up so that the greatest number of women can really step up and take place in this. Now, if you know this is for you, I would say right now, go to oneofmany.co.uk forward slash bewealth. That's oneofmany.co.uk forward slash bewealth. I'm just kind of putting a big circle around that there so you've got the details. You can, uh, you can get your place on the retreat right now this very second um, and then you know you're going to be in one of those 12 places because I know that uh, many of them are going to go throughout, um, uh, you know, starting right now. I'm sure that they're already starting to go. Um, uh, the other thing that you can do if you feel that you need to have a chat to someone about it, I totally get that, that some of you um, have, you know, have a decision-making process where you need to do that or you have questions, what about this, you know, what about my husband, what about my kids or whatever. If you feel you need to talk to someone, just type your phone number and I can see a couple of you have already done that into the question box just here. Um, and we will give you a call um, over the next few days. In fact, type your quest, type your number, and when is a good time to call you? That would be really helpful too. You know, uh, just call you Thursday, Friday. What time of the day works for you? Let us know. Just type the number in um, and uh, give us your full name, your phone number, and a good time would be great things there. Uh, that would be fantastic. Now, here's the thing. If you know it's right, don't bother with phone numbers, go and get registered because I can see a number of you go, oh my goodness, I'm looking at the chat box now and what people are saying about it. Um, people are like, dates and price please, I'm going, where, where is it, come on, come on. Um, so uh, so if, if, you, if you know it's for you, go straight to the website because I don't want you to miss out. Um, and then we can call and answer questions for you after the fact as well if you like. If you want to speak to someone, as I said, type it into the question box. Now, what I'm going to do now, ladies, is I'm very happy to open up for questions about any of the content that we've shared or about the seminar here. Um, I'm going to start by bringing all of the hands down. And if you have questions about anything, you can just raise your hand or alternatively, you can type your question into the question box. So um, now because I've only got first names, I hope we don't have too many people that are, um, that are all the same name. <laughs> we'll figure that out somehow or other. All right. Uh, so either type your questions into the question box or raise your hand. I'm going to come to some of the ladies who've risen, risen your hands. I can see Lisa has risen her hand and she's the only Lisa. So I'm going to come and unmute you, Lisa, so I can talk to you. Hi there, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. No, I can't hear you. Mm, you're on the phone, I can see. So, um, yeah, for some reason I can't hear you, my darling. So see if you can twiggle your audio settings and I'll come back. Uh, I can see Marilyn has her hand up. Is that a hand up? Give me a little wave if that's a hand up, Marilyn. Click it on and off again so I know it is a definite hand up. Excellent. Sometimes I think I unmute people and they didn't mean to have their hand up. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? Hello, Joe. Hello, everybody. It's great to speak with you. Where in the world are you, Marilyn? I'm in London. Lovely London. Lovely London. <laughs> What's your question, my darling? How can we support you? Well, I don't have so much a question that really to acknowledge you for bringing this for so many people. Oh. And um, yeah, really, it's amazing and. I, I will be in touch with you. I can't make it on, on that weekend. Oh, shame. Well, listen, um, yes. drop, drop us your details and, um, and we'll get in touch and we can keep you, keep you updated when we release dates for the next one or any of our other retreats because we have... Um, Absolutely. And the, the quote you had in the beginning is so powerful and I think that sums it all. Mm, it's very true. It's very, very true. <laughs> 
Marilyn, thank you so much for sharing. I, re that's, I, I It's lovely to be acknowledged. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Ah, lovely. I can see Muna. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Muna has her hand up. Give me a little click on and off, Muna, if you definitely want to speak to me. It's not an accidental hand. Ooh, she's not clicking. Maybe it's an accidental hand. Oh, no, no, there's a click. All right. <laughs> I'll come and say hello. Hi there, Muna. How are you? Hello? Hi. 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 Ah, uh, oh, there you are. I can hear you now. How are you? Fine, thank you. That's great. Where are you calling Hi. from, Muna? I'm calling from Nigeria. Oh, fantastic. What time is it in Nigeria? Is it I evening know. in Nigeria? Are we on the same time zone? Yes. Um, pretty much like London. It's 10.25 p.m. Ah, very cool. So not far off. Well, welcome. I think you may well be my first yeah. Nigerian webinar attendee. So welcome. You're very special. I have always <laughs> attended. <laughs> well, thank you for putting your hand up. What's your question? How can we help you today? Yeah. What I wanted to ask basically is uh, I've been following you and um, I know about the speak the chief speaker that you do. Yes. And um, when you were talking about cultural paradigms, I think I put the question up in the box that in Africa, speakers, local speakers, are not seen as that they should be paid. So when you talk about work creation and your know, in speaker or in Africa, especially in Nigeria, the perception is that we're giving you a platform to sell yourself, you know, so I'm going to close the medium. So the thing that you pay for that, so. Mm. I mean, the quality of the line is really yeah. poor, and I'm only kind of catching every every third or so word. You're sort of fading in and out a little bit. I wonder if you could type it into the question box for me. And, um, I already typed it. Oh, you already typed it? Okay, I'll go find it, my darling. I'll go find it now, and I'll, um, I'll see if I can answer it for you. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, so Muna says in Africa, especially Nigeria, they don't believe they should pay local speakers. How can a speaker make the difference and break this cultural paradigm? Um, Muna, my thoughts about that would be, I don't think you need to necessarily break the cultural paradigm. Um, if you don't necessarily need to be paid as a speaker. In fact, I think I've only been paid to speak uh, I don't know, like a handful of times, and I've spoken many, many thousands of times. Um, what I do is is uh, create great value, and then and then make an offer, and we make a hell of a lot more money that way than um, I would ever be able to get as a fee. So if you don't yet have it, do get a copy of my book called The Presentation Profits Blueprint. Um, you can grab that at uh, presentationprofitsblueprint.com, which I'll type. Um, to you now so you can presentation profits which is blueprint.com I'll just send that to all of you for what it's worth um, and uh, grab a copy of the book because in that I, I spell out how how exactly I've never been well, not never but rarely been paid as a speaker and made millions so um, so that's probably the answer to that question so let's have a look at a few of the questions in the question box then I'll come back and take a few more hands Karen says, I've already booked, yay, and I can't wait to get started on this transformation. Welcome, Karen. That's awesome. That's absolutely fantastic. Marilyn says, oh, it's my 60th birthday party. Marilyn, come. We will we'll have your 60th birthday party at our place. Give us a reason for a party. <laughs> um, oh, Karen is asking um, how many people will be there. We're going to have 40, 40 is our, is our um, number that we uh, have available at the Be Wealth Retreat. So no more than 40. So uh, that's why we have, well, we won't be 12 now. I'm not quite sure what it is right now, but it will be far less than that now, I would expect. So we've got a few phone numbers there as well. Um, good, good, good. A few people saying, uh, Maureen is asking, are we running the retreat in Australia? 
Maureen, we will be eventually, um, but probably not for a couple of years yet. Uh, we are, now that James, um, we've got our little boy James, he's 18 months old, Greg and I recognise that we can't travel as much as we used to, so we're sort of focusing on one country at a time. We're going to get England, uh, the UK up to speed and ticking along, and then we're going to come back to Australia and, um, and launch uh, one of many out there as well. So it will be a little while. We'll be looking for people to support us out there. So if you want to be courageous and come over to the UK and get the education on this side of the world, then you might just be part of the team for when we, um, for when we actually uh, do it in Australia. <laughs> um, Petra's saying, can you tell us more about taking it into the body? It didn't quite make sense to me. What does it mean? Okay, let's explain it this way. How can I explain this? Our body stores, the, let's put it this way, the body and the mind aren't separate. Because of our Western cultural paradigm and because Descartes supposedly struck a deal with the church back in those days, um, uh, there was, uh, there's this kind of consensus that our mind is one thing and our body is the other that our body belongs to science and our mind belongs to, belongs to God, for, uh, you know, for want of a better way of putting it. And actually, that's not the case. Science shows us now that the body and the mind are the same. Um, if, if you're thinking a happy thought, the neurotransmitters that you're releasing are soaking every single cell in your body. There's amazing stories, and actually this will, this will explain it, Petra, in a way that I can't. There are amazing stories about people receiving heart transplants. In fact, there's a story in, the, in a story in a book called The Holographic Universe, which is a fantastic read by Michael Talbot, where they describe, um, I'm sure, I think it was that book anyway, they describe a young girl who received a heart transplant from a murder victim and they were able to solve the murder based on memories she got like that came to her after receiving the heart transplant from the actual victim like amazing right so what so memory and and now by the way i'm a doctor i don't understand how i just know that it is <laughs> and some of my doctor friends would cringe to hear me say it i'm sure but there's there's too much evidence around it so our body actually stores memory we have this cellular memory we remember like at a physical level. So if there are things like, you know, um, like money is not spiritual, like it's not spiritual to have a lot of money, that doesn't just live as a belief in your mind. It's actually held in the body somewhere, right? It's held in the body. And so for, um, for women especially because so much of what is our femininity is, is in the body and the cyclical nature of our body, we need to get things out of the body system as well as just, you know, the mental programming. So that's kind of what we, what we, um, what we do quite a bit differently than, uh, than many organisations out there, I would say. Um, Catherine says, Regarding the make stage, I'm following a dream to make jewellery, but I have a very low income. What was your thought, Read do what you love? Should I use the skills that are more valuable to other people, even if it's not so rewarding to me? Um, here's my thoughts about do what you love. Do what you love because it's a hell of a lot easier to keep doing it. Um, but more importantly than doing what you love is doing why you love, your purpose. So I believe that if your purpose is strong enough, the, exactly what you're doing on a day-by-day -day basis, as long as it's using your natural talents and strengths, um, it, does, it becomes no longer a choice. Does that make sense? So there's, um, so it, it's, a, it's a different, I kind of come from a bit of a different paradigm about it. I love what I do, don't get me wrong, but I also do quite a bit of things that I don't love um, don't love doing because my why is really, really important. Um, uh, and I don't have a problem with it. I don't mind doing it. Like it's not, you know, it's not like, let me give you an example. Like my favourite thing in the world is not sitting in front of my computer and writing emails and copy. 
but I do it because it's really important for me to get the message out there until I find someone who can come on and support me in that area. Does that make sense? So um, it is really important that if you want to create wealth that what you're doing is valuable to other people. And jewellery can definitely be valuable to other people, definitely. But it's all about how you leverage what you do. It's all about how you structure what you do, what your business vehicle is and how you're kind of how you're doing that and how it's branded is very important. Because if you think about jewellery, like, you know, there's huge um, – uh, difference in, in price ranges. The, the same amount of silver in a, in a necklace could, um, you know, could go for 50 pounds. It could go for 600 pounds. It could go for 1,000 pounds. And it's all about brand. So it's about getting clever as well. So I hope that, um, I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you. Um, Petal says, when you say manage, bringing order to your finances, what if what I earn is presumed to be handouts from First National Bank? How can I engage? Uh, I don't understand what that means. I don't understand what that means, Hetal. Can you give me some more information about that? Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. I'm just seeing that there's there's an echo. Sorry about that. Um, so I can't understand callers. Let me put a headset in. That's obviously just started. Um, all righty. Let's see here. Question, next question here is... Um, uh, Will I be selling at? Um, will I? You know, will we be selling anything at the retreat? Um, we are going to be. We've got a lot of content to cover off on this retreat. As I said, um, being uh, only seventy-five minutes that I had to get through content and things uh, today means that um, that I wasn't able to cover off as much of the content as I would have liked to. There's a lot to cover. If you could see the number of post-it notes, what it takes to create transformation in a two-day period of time is no small feat. So while I will be sharing about um, about uh, our Lead the Change program while we're there, it will be you know a small fraction of um, of what we're do of what we're going to be doing there. It's certainly not going to be one of these pitch fest events where there's ten speakers and everyone talks for ninety minutes and everyone pitches at the end. It's absolutely not that. This is a transformational. Um, transformational event uh, standalone you can come along everything I've said about it is um, is absolutely valid oh one thing I didn't say about it is the guarantee so for if any of you are concerned about that and and um, worried that you don't have enough um, information to be able to make your decision um, we do have a guarantee for the event as well so you can stay anytime up to lunchtime on day two so come along for the whole event stay for lunch, up until lunchtime on day two and if it's not absolutely everything that we've said and you haven't got amazing uh, transformation, amazing results as a result of it, then let us know and we'll happily give you your money back. Obviously, we'll be you know, in the hole a little bit because we'll have paid for your accommodation and those sorts of things. But it's a risk we're willing to take because we don't have a lot of – We don't. this is the first time we've run this event. We don't have a lot of success stories about this event. I mean, I've got a lot of clients I've worked with. I've got a lot of success stories to share. But with this event, we don't have, you know, I don't have that that level of um, proof for you. I am asking you to trust me a little bit on it, I guess. So for that reason, we've got a pretty, what I believe is a pretty extraordinary guarantee in place. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's um, that's about that. So I help, hope that makes sense. Uh, Petra says, that makes sense. Thank you. That's good. Um, Karen, does ego play a big part in having more wealth? Yes, it stops you if that helps, Karen. <laughs> um, I think it, well, it stops you from enjoying it. Let's put it that way. You can create wealth with a lot of ego, but you also bring with it a lot of stress, a lot of, um, you know, fear, a lot of all sorts of stuff if you're creating from ego. So that's, uh, so that's for, for, that's for sure. Um, hmm. Annette says, could I use help with the admin side of my business? I could help you with emails. <laughs> Thank you, Annette. 
Um, I'm always open to being supported, so please drop us a line and uh, very, very happy. Um, Jen said, I didn't get the principles one, four, six, and seven. Yes, Jen, sorry, I didn't have time, but I, I do have time now. As I say, I'm happy to stick around and answer questions for as long as possible. So let me give you the other principles of wealth for those of you who are still around and don't have other things to rush off to. Um, if you do need to go, that's absolutely fine, ladies, you can. But remember, go to oneofmany.co.uk forward slash be wealth to get registered for the event or send us in your phone number um, in the question box uh, if you would like us to give you a call. So the other principles of wealth, ladies, to share with you are the principle of flow, right? The principle of flow. In fact, what I'm going to do right now, oh, I can't because I'm on my husband's computer. Um, so I will, uh, would you be able to open up the One Woman Conference slideshow for me on there, please, babe? Thanks. Um, uh, so the principle number one is the principle of flow. In order to create great wealth, you don't want to get stuck in accumulating or amassing which is quite a masculine paradigm thing. For feminine, for, to create flow from soft power, it's about money in, money out, right? It's about, um, and not just money in, money out flow from that perspective, it's about finding your own personal flow and it's about getting into the into universal flow. So there's the principle of flow works in many, many different arenas and we talk about it in many contexts. One is your natural talents and abilities, making sure you're in the, excuse me, in the flow state. Um, the next is making sure that you're um, that you're harnessing flow. Like it's it's not about like I use a distinction of um, of a bucket versus a river. You don't want to just fill a bucket. You want to go and tap into a, a tributary, into a river, and, and get get that you know that the flow of the river running through you and through your causes and through your intention and purpose in the world and into what you want to create. So that's the principle of flow, which is the first wealth principle. I think I gave you principle number two and number three, didn't I? So they're already done. Um, principle number four, I just need, I kind of know them all, but I don't know the exact order that I have uh, that I have them in. So I'm just finding them in my other slideshow. So I give them to you in the right order. Hello, where are you? Sorry, ladies, coming, coming, coming. This is why you stick around right to the end. It's like the credits in the movie, you know, when they have like outtakes and funny things in the credits. When you stick around right to the very, very end of the webinar, you get all of the bits and pieces that I didn't have time to put into the rest of it. <laughs> so principle number four is the principle of cost. The principle of cost says that if you want to create wealth, it's going to cost you something. Now, it might be cost as in investment in your education. It might be cost as in you might have to let go of your pride. It might be cost as in, um, as in uh, you know, it's going to, it, it might take some time, which means, you know, you have to spend a bit less time with your kids than you would like, than you are right now, for instance. Um, there, there is a, everything has a cost. Everything has a cost. And for a lot, the, the thing about the principle of cost is that unless you get clear with yourself on what the cost is, then unconsciously that cost is a barrier to you participating in the new, in the new future that you want for yourself. So it's really important that you get clear on what is the cost for you. The next principle, uh, number five, is the principle of gratitude, the principle of gratitude. And this states that that which you are grateful for, you get more of. That which you focus on, you get more of. One of the exercises we teach our ladies inside of all of our programs, and one of many, is thinking and thanking. And thinking and thanking is at the end of the day, and I'll be doing this when I go and hop into bed just shortly, is you lie in bed, you think of all of the amazing synchronous things that have happened, like the little mini miracles, things that you didn't expect. And then you think about all of the things in life you're grateful for and you bask in the gratitude for those things. We're incredibly rich. We're rich beyond measure, ladies. And while we're focusing on lack and what we don't have, we experience more lack and not having. But when you shift and start to focus on all of the abundance, you have the abundant health the abundant beauty in nature, the abundant love in your family life, then you start to experience abundance of all things and this includes wealth. So gratitude is, the, is, uh, is principle number six. And principle number seven is the principle of growth 
And I actually did teach the principle of growth, though I didn't um, call it the principle of growth when I was teaching it. And that is this, I, I, I likened it to the Amazonian rainforest, that as women, um, as men, like as humans, we thrive unchecked. When you remove limitations at the physical and emotional level, uh, spiritual, physical and emotional level, when you remove all sources of limitation, we thrive, we grow, we thrive unchecked until we reach a natural kind of ecosystem and a natural balance. What is your role in that rainforest uh, in, in any particular currency? So if, if we're talking about wealth, you know, you might be a big, tall, you know, jungle tree. You might be a creeper. You might be a, you know, a, a, a bush. You might be a middle-sized tree. In the realm of love, you might be a big, tall tree. You know, in the currency of love, you might be a big, tall tree. You might be a creeper. You might be a medicinal plant. You know, everyone's um, a different, has a different natural, fully self-expressed version of themselves. And to the extent that we try and live up to other people's um, uh, capacities for this, then, then you know, we're, we're doing ourselves a disservice. So, ladies, they are all of the other principles, which I didn't have time to go through. My sincerest apologies, but thank you for um, thank you for sharing, and um, and I hope that uh, that's helpful. The question is, do I have a book about that? No, I don't. I'm sorry, but I will be going into it in a lot of detail at the retreat. We we will be going into it in a lot of detail of the retreat. <laughs> um, excellent. Excellent. Well, ladies, it looks like I've answered all of the questions from what you've got there. If there's anything else you need, please drop us a line at um, at one of many. The email is talk at one of many co uk. That's talk at one of many co uk. Um, and those of you who have sent us phone numbers, thank you. We have quite a few calls to make by the looks of it tomorrow. Uh, and if you've joined us while we've been listening here, congratulations. Welcome and I look forward to meeting you out here in the beautiful countryside in January. Take very good care until then and uh, look forward to meeting you all. Bye.